morning guys Nikki from Gracie's house now I did pop a post on yesterday evening and I'm oh we've got a little visitor she doesn't come in very often Chalky's come to say hello as well there we go. say hello bye <laughs> um, so I popped a post on yesterday to say that I was going to use hi Jackie you're always the first one on Jackie keen I love it um, so yeah so I've said I was going to try and use the Giovanna flourish uh, stencil from redesign with Prima so if any of you watched my unpacking um, live uh, which was maybe a week ten days ago um, this was one of the stencils that I got now just as a note so it's a really this is a small one some of the some of the redesign stencils are huge this is a nice manageable one uh, hi Patricia and Gregory and Kathy. Thanks for watching guys. Mary, hi. Um, so yes, so I have this cute little cabinet behind me and what I did say in my post yesterday, I've never done a raised stencil before. Hi Michelle. <laughs> there we go. Just woken up. I've been up for a little while. Uh, so I'm working on this little cabinet. Now this is painted in the new silk paint um, by Dixie Bell and this is the colour called Black Sands. If you've ever used fusion paint, it's a really, really good match, in my opinion, and a good match to ash. Um, so this is a cabinet. I've done something, I've done exactly the same cabinet before and I did it in the, in the um, uh, antebellum blue and had gold stripes on the side and did all sorts of dribbly bits on the front with mermaid tail and some limeade. Um, we did some really, so when I got the same one in, I love these old charm cabinets. They're really, really good quality. Um, Jackie, doesn't it look fab? It look, I'm really actually quite pleased, hence I've come on live because I'm quite pleased how it's turned out. Uh, so I, lo I love these old oak cabinets. This one had a bit of a split in the top, so I've taken the piece off and clamped it and glued it so the splits, um, luckily that was all that it needed, for some reason it had pulled apart. Michelle, the silk paint is brilliant. Um, for me, I use Fusion as well and it's much more similar in application to Fusion. Um, so yeah, it's got it has got a different feel. So if you've ever felt a fusion finish, it's got that because it's got the built-in built top coat. And I know that Dixie Belle doesn't have to have a top coat, but it still has a much more chalky feel. So the silk paint, you guys in the States, I know if you're watching, uh, you're frustrated that you haven't got it yet. Um, but just imagine how much they've got to make to get all of you delivered to and, and happy. So that's why it hasn't hasn't come over to the States yet. Um, uh, what paint would you compare to silk to? So Hayley, as I've just said, um, for me, the closest comparison is fusion mineral paint. Um, hi, Terry. You can listen to me all day. Oh, lovely. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think it's very similar to fusion, but for me, the extra benefit is that it does have, um, the, it, Michelle, you've just said built-in top coat, take my money. It's also got a built-in stain blocking primer. So even one less step to deal with. And I have to say so far on all of the colours I've used, um, and I've used the, the white, uh, I can't remember if it's salt water or white cap, that's the two whites. And I've tested it on pine, which I always have to stain block prime because of the knots. Um, and it's fab, so far so good. And I know pine can come out over time, but you, you kind of get a feel for it. And I think it's, I think it's really gonna be um, a popular product. At the moment, the colour range is a very classy, um, quite neutral colour range. So if you if you like the brights, that's the main range is still going to be for you. It's, I, I haven't actually tried blending it, but I can blend Fusion. So it's going to be blendable. But again, the main range, you'll probably find easier Dixie Belle main range to blend. That's that's kind of its selling point. Um, but it's really, really it's just it's just a great paint. Um, so that the, the colour range they've done, the palettes, they've called it like a Hamptons colour palette. So it has, it's got these lovely greys, there's a true black, there's some white, beautiful, beautiful pink called Conch, which is almost a perfect match for tea rose. It's beautiful. My favourite neutral, there's a colour called Oyster, which is, um, it's a, it is a white neutral, but it's, I don't know, it's one of those ones that kind of, you can put it with pink, you can put it with grey. Oyster's like my favourite of the neutrals so far. So back to the stencil. Sorry, you got me chatting about paint and I'm supposed to be talking to you about the stencil. So this is Giovanna Flourish from Redesign with Prima. And 
I was just saying that um, to note that all of the stencils are now discontinued. So if you know any of your retailers that you can get them from, snap them up. They will not be making any more. When it's gone, it's gone. I think this one is still available in um, certainly in the States and some of your UK retailers may still carry it. So I originally planned to use um, chalk paste for this but I didn't have a colour to match this. And then I thought, well, there's no point me using chalk paste because the whole point of chalk paste is it's coloured and I plan to paint over this. So I've used um, Dixie Belle Mud and I've gone brown just because it's darker than the white and I'm gonna be painting over with a dark colour. So my plan is once this is dried, I will paint it and then I'm gonna dry brush with the um, Bronze Age Art Alchemy Wax, which is also from Redesign with Prima. I'm not gonna get a chance to show you the dry brushing because this isn't gonna dry in time. So this is the one that I did off camera to make sure I was pleased how it went. Um, Patricia, this isn't particularly uh, a stencil that um, is supposed to be for race stenciling. So this is, I, I don't, I'm not even gonna pretend I know how thick it is, but you can see it's just normal, normal stencil thickness it's not a really really thin one but I didn't want it to be really really raised either I just wanted it to be quite subtle now I haven't kept my mud in the fridge so it's not gone moldy because I've kept it in a once this is open mud has to be kept um, in a cold or, or certainly not a warm um, environment because it can go moldy so mine hasn't gone moldy but because it's not in the fridge it's not firm I'll show you it's quite can you see it's still quite wet and I think what's happened here is there has it has seeped under and I think it's because it's not it's not particularly solid so if you wanted a more um, defined finish I would recommend that you have to have something that's a bit firmer than what I'm using it might just be the top piece it might be firmer further down Michelle you've got this one yeah it's not it's not flimsy is it um, but it's not a really really thick one but I think for these um, I, I personally, I just wanted something very subtle, like I said, that I can dry, bru uh, dry brush my wax over and just really just subtly pick up the highlights. So I'm pleased. The other reason I've picked this stencil, I'm going to show you little bits of this. I don't want to, I don't want to give too much away on, on here. Um, okay, so you know me, I love adding detail to cabinet doors. So on the little inserts of the inside of the cabinet doors, I've added the dark damask decoupage paper. I didn't do a live or a video on this one because you guys, you can look back on my posts. I've done, I don't know, two or three of these already. So you don't need to keep seeing me do the same thing with just a different pattern. So we've got a pair of doors with that on and I thought it kind of emulated some of the patterns. It's close enough. And like I said, when I did this, the same, I did exactly the same cabinet, but in different colors. And I did decor wax stripes. Michelle, you like that? Pretty, eh? So, yeah, I did decor, I did stripes, and I kind of feel like I want to continue on. I like adding those little extra details. However subtle, it's just nice. It's a great selling point. Let me turn the whole piece around, so sorry if this is noisy. Okay. So, make sure you're in the camera now. I've got to be careful. It's a rare sunny day now. It's, it's gone cold, our weather but the sun is low, so it's coming in my windows and I don't want it reflecting back. So this has actually been cut slightly off centre. So when you place this, I don't know if that's just mine, I'm having to measure to the edge of the actual cutout rather than to the edge of the stencil material. So I've got it pre-taped. I eyeball it first and then just see how close I am. So I'm gonna go about there. And I'm just gonna measure here and it's about from the one on the other side so that's like four inches 4.1 just over yeah I'm way out <laughs> but it doesn't um, it doesn't take much just to shift it along and remeasure that's going to be too far gone the other way I can tell that already yeah? sorry bear with me Hayley cheeky I don't want to show you the top it's not finished <laughs> Uh, yeah, the top is um, Voodoo Gel Stain in Tobacco Road. It's a really muted brown. Uh, have you been using the No Pain Gel Stain quite a lot recently? Hi, Leslie and Gail as well. Um, 
Oh, that's better. Much better, that'll do. It's not perfect, I'm happy with that. So yeah, it's the Voodoo Gel Stone, which is the water-based one. Um, I just fancy something a little bit different. I don't wanna be uh, just doing the same thing all the time, and I've used a lot of walnut no pain gel stone just recently. So. Keep popping on and saying, hi guys. Um, if you've got any questions, drop them in. So I have plastic spatula. I have my Dixie Mud and we've got the Giovanni Flourish. And I think that looks level as well, doesn't it? So I'm hoping that it might not squidge through quite so much. And basically all I did was this. And like I said, because I'm gonna be painting over it, I'm not too bothered that there was a little bit of, um, I'm not too bothered there was a little bit of bleed through. Essentially it's bleed through under the stencil with the, with the mud because I'm painting over the whole lot anyway. Um, so you can use um, chalk pastes with these stencils to give you these nice subtle effects. But like I said, because I'm painting over it, it would have been a waste of that kind of product. So I decided to go for mud. But lesson learnt from this time round, I shall keep my mud in the fridge. Certainly if I decide to, to use it for raised stencils in the future, um, I've got a nice dry, cool cupboard that I keep mine in, so it doesn't necessarily need to be in the fridge. But um, I think for this purpose, it would probably help. Hi Cheryl. Hi Audrey. Got enough there. Just drag down a little bit and fill in. Oh, nearly went over the words there. I don't want redesign with Prima. Note to self, keep your mud in the fridge. I know. I know. Okay, so there we go. That's that. If there's anyone out there that does uh raised stenciling and can give me any pointers. Cheryl, I'm costing you a fortune. <laughs> Hang on, let me just read the rest of Cheryl's comment. Affecting husband's health. <laughs> Jackie, you've been admiring the top. It is, yes, so the top, so with, with the voodoo gel stains, uh, yeah, the voodoo ones where they're water-based, uh, I think you have to put them over you have to sand back to, to, to bare. And to be honest, with these oak finishes, the, the original finish is always so thick and dark. You can't see what the grain is anyway. I'm not gonna show you, it, it's not quite finished. I think it needs a, sand, a little light sand and then maybe another coat. Um, okay. Morning, Judith, how are you? And Belinda and Yvonne. Hi there, guys. Okay, so uh, you don't leave it on while it's drying either. So that other one on, that I showed you on the other end that I've done previously. That hasn't dried yet, that's still drying. So I'm just gonna carefully lift up the tape. And just lift it carefully so as to try not to smudge it too badly. Actually, that one's done better than the first one. Terry was a bit slow there. I'm taking the stencil off. <laughs> Sorry if I was a bit slow taking the stencil off there. I was trying not to smudge it. Hi, Tina. <laughs> this one's turned out better than the first one. How cool is that? So it's even, even nicer. Oh, my dog's barking because I think my husband's bringing another personal training client through the garden. So she'll shut up in a minute. So. There. What do you think? I'll bring it a bit closer. So if you wanted to, there is some sort of, you know, there is some um, high part, higher parts. You could just go, go over with a, a really, really light sand afterwards. Really light sand because it's very easy to sand mud. Um, so you could do. Janice, do you know what? When I did the other side, I thought it looked quite good brown. But I don't know if you caught the beginning. The plan is to, to go over it with the, sa with the same colour and, um, and then dry brush it with bronze age so it will have some brownness to it but it'll have like a metallic brown so 
um, and I might do the same. I might I might test one end once this is dry, and um, and if it goes well, I might come and do the do the other one live. Okay, I'm just trying to. I don't know where to put my stencil down because it's covered in mud. There we go. I'm going to lean it up against another piece. Okay, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Hi Heather. Terry, you think it looks good? I think I'm well. I'm well chuffed with that. And do you know what I didn't do? I didn't. I didn't measure from the top down, so they could be at completely different heights when I look round. The brown mud, as it goes, so yeah, it does. It does look quite good, Jackie, with the brown. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the plan will change. Michelle, it's four thirty. Go back to sleep. Yes, please do. Yeah. Um, okay, so I um, I'm going to crack on now. Let this dry. And um, I'm not sure if I've got anything else to show you today. I've got some cleaning and prepping to do and I've got some furniture to move around because we've got lots. Kathy, it's lovely, isn't it? So again, so it's Dixie Bell mud, just um, plastic spatulas. You can get these from Dixie Bell as well. They come in a pack of three. This is the smallest one. And then there's that size and there's a really big one. But I had to go with this one because I wouldn't have been able to get the other ones in my pot. Uh, and just as a recap, that's the Giovanna Flourish. Um, stencil and I've got the voodoo gel stain in tobacco road on the top and this is silk so this is only going to be UK Australian customers UK some of Europe um, the silk range and this is black sands okay guys I will sign off love you and leave you uh, thanks ever so much for watching. If you do get a chance, if you haven't already, if you can just go and like my page, like and follow, if it gives you that option, and um, that'd be that'd be brilliant. Thanks ever so much. Thanks ever so much for watching. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye.